Hey everyone, it's Colin from DIY Guy. Thanks for checking out today's video where I'll be talking about blackberry anthracnose, which is a very common fungal disease among brambles like blackberries, raspberries, and black raspberries. But I'm just gonna focus on blackberries today because as you know, if you've watched my previous videos, I've got my mini blackberry farm behind me, which is kind of a trial ground for uh, the future large blackberry farm that I wanna have. So I'm working out the kinks right now before it gets uh, too big and I sink too much money into it. So recently I found that some of my blackberry leaves were infected with some sort of disease. I kind of panicked at first thinking, oh no, what's this gonna be? I have no idea how to research a disease. Um, but I dug a little deeper for a couple hours and found a lot of actually helpful information that I'm hoping to make this video with. That way you don't have to do all the research yourself. Uh, I didn't find that there was a lot of helpful YouTube content, so that's what I'm trying to do with this video. So what is anthracnose? Well, it's a fungal disease, and I'm just gonna focus on the blackberry part. So this is what anthracnose looks like. It's really just 1 16th to 1 8 inch diameter purplish gray spots that kind of develop on your leaves. So it's like a purple ring with a grayish center, and that's how it starts. But eventually, if you leave it to go on its own for too long, it's gonna start developing holes in your leaves, and if it spreads to the canes, then it can cause them to dry, crack, it'll cause Obviously leaf loss, your berries are gonna be small, dry, and kind of scabby. And then, like I mentioned, it's gonna damage your canes, which can also make it harder for them to survive a cold winter. So how does anthracnose spread? Well, it really thrives in wet, warm conditions, so late spring, early summer, and it actually spreads through spores. And so uh, wind can blow the spores around. It's primarily spread through rain or any top watering, which you're not supposed to do. Um, but the water can splash the spores around and disperse them across other healthy parts of the plant. And then you can even have cross-contamination. For example, if you're pruning your plant, you touch a infected leaf and then touch a healthy leaf, that's how it's gonna spread also. And finally, it does overwinter, unfortunately. It overwinters on diseased canes. So if you have diseased canes, cut them out, get rid of them. Uh, if they're too far gone, obviously if you can save them, then save them. Um, but any flora canes that have already fruited and they're diseased, get rid of them, burn them, don't let them anywhere near your blackberry patch. Now we're coming to the main point which you probably came to this video for, which is how do you prevent and control the spread of blackberry anthracnose? So the number one way to prevent blackberry anthracnose is to plan your bed well. By this, I mean maximize airflow and sunlight, two things that fungus really hates. If you've already got an established bed, make sure you're thinning your canes. Uh, don't have them like a massive blackberry hedge because that's not gonna allow good airflow or sunlight penetration. If you're starting a brand new blackberry bed, uh, plant your plants about three or four feet apart. And if you're doing multiple rows, space them about eight to ten feet apart and a little pro tip uh, if you are planting multiple rows align them in parallel with the prevailing wind direction that way all the rows get good uh, airflow otherwise the first row will kind of block the airflow to the rest of the rows uh, another biggie is to avoid top watering i know this is huge with tomatoes and peppers uh, if you top water it's going to keep the leaves wet longer which is a big no-no uh, so drip irrigation, bottom watering, anything you can to keep the leaves dry as much of the time as possible. Finally, you can mulch around the plants. Uh, this kind of prevents rain splash from splashing dirt and debris onto the bottom leaves. An extra step you can take, which you'll see behind me, uh, my blackberries are actually kind of naked on the bottom foot above the ground. So I actually pruned off the leaves that are about 10 to 12 inches above ground just because I didn't want debris splashing up and causing kind of disease or bacteria on them. Now, if you've done everything that you can think of, you've done all these steps and you're still having a problem with anthracnose, then it's probably time to move to a fungicide, which is going to be a more efficient way to control the outbreak. Now, if you've done everything you can to prevent and control anthracnose and you're still not having any luck, then it's probably time to go with the fungicide route, which there are some very good organic options. Number one option, which I'm starting to use, is neem oil. First off, what is neem oil? It's simply vegetable oil pressed from the fruit and seeds of the neem tree. It's completely natural, organic, uh, it's a fungicide and pesticide naturally occurring that's been used for a very long time. Now we get into the important part, what to look for when you buy neem oil. I probably wouldn't recommend doing what I did, which is go to Home Depot, find neem oil concentrate and just buy it without doing any research. Uh, luckily for me, I actually picked the right one, but it could have gone either way. First thing you need to decide before buying neem oil is how you want to use it. Do you want to use it as a fungicide or a fungicide plus a pesticide? Uh, the second one's gonna be a little bit more expensive just because it's got more ingredients. Uh, for a fungicide, all you need written on the bottle for the in active ingredients is hydrophobic extract of neem oil. So this is what I have actually right here. 
This is not 100%, it's only 70% cold pressed neem oil and then 30% other ingredients. So this does not include azadiractin, which is what is the pesticide portion. For fungicide plus pesticide, you want 100% cold pressed neem oil and you gotta make sure that includes the ingredient azadiractin in the active ingredients list. Azadiractin is the active component that does the pest control side of it. So if you don't have azadiractin, it's not gonna do anything to repel or kill your pests. What azadiractin does, it actually messes up the bug's hormones and kind of makes them reproduce weird, re reproduce less, and also kind of shortens their life cycle. It's also kind of an anti-feed, which makes the plant taste bad, so they don't eat it in the first place. Final note on this, the way neem oil actually works as a fungicide is it does not kill the spores themselves. It actually coats them in oil and then prevents them from spreading around to other parts of the plant. Now, the last thing I want to hit on, if you're still with me, is how to apply neem oil to your plants. So every bottle that you buy is going to have its specific instructions for how to mix it. It's probably going to be some ratio ratio of warm water to dish soap as kind of an emulsifier and then also the neem oil concentrate obviously. A few tips for applying it for best results. Uh, you do want to apply it early in the morning or later in the evening. Avoid those hot hours in the day because it might cause your leaves to burn a little bit. Uh, you also want to make sure there's no chance of rain in 24 hours. Uh, you can probably see the sky's pretty dark so I'm not actually going to be applying it today because uh, once you apply it, if it rains an hour later, it's just going to wash it right off and you'll have to reapply it. The next one kind of depends on how much rain you get. If you get a lot of rain in a week, you'll probably need to apply it every two or three days. Uh, but if it goes a week or two without raining, one application per week or every two weeks is probably going to do the trick. Now finally is the most important part, which is to coat the entire plant. So again, these are spores that are going to infect whatever they come in contact with. So if there's any blank spots that haven't been sprayed on your plants, then that's where the spores are going to attach themselves and it's going to infect those parts of the plants. So you want to make sure that you coat the tops and the bottoms of the leaves as well as all the canes to make sure you maximize protection. One final tip, make sure you do a test patch on a couple leaves before you just douse the whole thing in neem oil. Uh, just make sure that it's going to do what you expect without burning the leaves. Well that's it for my long blackberry anthracnose video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any words of wisdom, uh, leave them in the comments below, uh, especially what kind of fungicide you use. Maybe you've got some experience with neem oil that you'd like to share. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button. Helps me out a lot. Uh, keep growing it yourself and I'll catch you in the next one.